Good evening. Welcome to a round table on rheumatoid arthritis powered by Cipla. Today, we have gathered here to shed light on an increasingly prevalent and impactful condition that affects millions of lives worldwide. Rheumatoid arthritis or RA is a chronic autoimmune disease characterized by inflammation and pain in joints primarily targeting the small joints of hands and feet. However, it can also affect other parts of the body, including the lungs, heart, and blood vessels. RA is also caused by abnormal immune response, where the immune system mistakenly attacks healthy tissues, leading to chronic inflammation and joint damage. The exact cause of autoimmune response remains unknown, but it is believed to involve a combination of genetic, environmental, and hormonal factors. In recent years, India has witnessed a concerning rise in the prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis. With a population of over 1.3 billion people, the burden of this condition is significant. The current scenario in India reflects the urgent need for increased awareness, improved access to healthcare, and enhanced support systems for those living with rheumatoid arthritis. In this panel discussion, we aim to discuss and address such issues challenges ahead on. Joining us for the discussion, we have with us Dr. Santosh Mandal. He's a consultant rheumatologist, RTIICS, Mukundapur, Kolkata. Uh, we also have with us Dr. Anupam, Dr. Anupam Vakulo. He's a chief consultant, clinical uh, immunology and rheumatology at the Apollo Medics Super Speciality Hospitals, Lucknow. Uh, we are also joined by Dr. Paul Antony. He is a HOD and Assistant Professor, Department of Rheumatology, Amla Institute of Medical Science, Trishur. Also joining us today is Dr. Nagha Prabhu. He is a consultant, rheumatologist, Shakti Rheumatology Center, Ramanathampuram, Coimbatore. Another panel joining us, Dr. Rahul Jain. Dr. Jain is a consultant rheumatologist, Narayana Multi Speciality Hospital, Jaipur. Last, we have with us Dr. Nilesh Nolkha. He is a consultant rheumatologist, Nirjara Multi Speciality Clinic, Kandivali, West Mumbai. Once again, I uh, extend a warm welcome to you all for this panel discussion. I would like to start with uh, Dr. Santosh first. Uh, Dr. Santosh, uh, so when we talk about uh, the treatment options here in India, uh, when we see what are the consequences of inadequate or unaffordable treatment options for the patients with rheumatoid arthritis in India? Yeah, I think the current uh, treatment or medications which we have available here in India, I think most of the, our patients, I think we can uh, treat with those current medications like uh, including the conventional synthetic DMARDs, uh, even including the most of the biologics which are available here and also the JAK inhibitors which are available. I think, I think more than 90% of the patients we can treat with those medications only. There are few, I would say around 5 to 10% of patients who are resistant to these medications. And uh, that is where uh, I think this costly medications and all come into the picture. So that is where we really need help. We are uh, like, uh, uh, like most of the patients not be able to afford those medications. And, but otherwise, uh, I think more than 90% of the patients, we can treat the current medications and everything, whatever is available in our country at an affordable price, I would say. Thank you, Dr. Santosh, for introducing to that. And uh, going forward, uh, I would like to ask, uh, my next question is to Dr. Anupam. Uh, Dr. Anupam, uh, when we talk about uh, the current, uh, like the medicines available here in India, how would you describe the current availability and affordable uh, quality treatment for rheumatoid arthritis in India? As Dr. Santosh uh, uh, also highlighted that. Thanks, Riddhi. Yeah, I agree with Santosh. I think uh, uh, we have a set of uh, targeted synthetic disease modifying drugs and the conventional synthetic TMRs. And I think uh, I wouldn't talk about the villages and things like that, but I think even in the smaller cities, the medications are reasonably well available. And um, uh, most of the medications uh, are pretty affordable. I think um, maybe of the lot, sulfasalazine is a little costly, I guess. The targeted uh, synthetic DMRs are also fairly affordable. The biologics, which is needed for a small minority, maybe 10 to 15 percent patients, um, they're costly. The prices have come down dramatically. 
but they're still fairly out of the reach of the common man, so to speak. Thank you, Dr. Anupam, for highlighting that, um, that yes, uh, the rheumatoid arthritis, um, the medicines here in India is not so easily available and uh, that needs to be uh, taken care about. Uh, Dr. Paul, coming to you, uh, in the same lines, in your opinion, what exactly is the major challenge which is faced by the patients in accessing the medicine and even the uh, good quality treatment uh, for the rheumatoid arthritis? And uh, what, what, what are the different cases you might have come across? One of the problems that uh, we face is that probably the patients live a little bit far away from us. Uh, the rheumatologists are not a very big community. We are a very small community even now. So many a times people find it very difficult to access a rheumatologist. Second thing is uh, referral to a rheumatologist. That also becomes a challenge because many times patients don't know that we are the ones who are supposed to be treating rheumatoid arthritis. It may not be uh, the uh, general practitioners who treat. Many a times they treat. And specifically with rheumatoid arthritis, the referral to a rheumatologist early is very important because rheumatoid arthritis responds well during the initial stages. And if you lose the initial few years, it becomes very difficult to treat. Then again, the problem comes when the patient has to take the medicine for a long time. Many times patients believe that if they take medicines for a long time, they have side effects. So they stop using these medications. Fortunately, as uh, Anupam sir said, uh, this availability of the drugs is not that big a problem in most parts of India. And cost, if you consider other countries, is relatively little bit better, except for maybe the uh, biologicals. But access to the, uh, the rheumatologist remains a challenge even now in most parts of India. Maybe not the medicines as such, but the adherence to medicines definitely is a challenge. Thank you, Dr. Paul, uh, for bringing out to that. Uh, Dr. Naga uh, Prabhu, I want to come to you. Uh, like, uh, as Dr. said, uh, Dr. Paul said, uh, like a lot of people are not even aware that uh, they are uh, supposed to be get treated by a rheumatoid arthritis specialist. Uh, and when we talk about the medicines, it is a different case like as well. Uh, so do you believe uh, that there is a need for increased awareness regarding uh, one, because of the, uh, one, the rheumatoid arthritis, the disease itself, and also the importance of uh, affordable and quality treatment that they can actually reach out uh, to hospitals or uh, to their uh, treatment officials and ask that they can get a good and affordable treatment. So is it, uh, I mean, is it a right way of uh, creating awareness is uh, important, do you think so? Yes, good evening to all. See, uh, basically, uh, our association, uh, Indian Rheumatology Association, is taking uh, a big step towards this, creating awareness about rheumatic diseases among the public. See, uh, the numbers are very huge. Basically, uh, our population is somewhere around 1.4. It has crossed this 1.3 billion. And uh, we have our own Indian statistics which say that more than 1% of the population have rheumatoid arthritis. Leave alone the big junk of other diseases we see. So that comes to somewhere around 1.4 crores of rheumatoid arthritis patients in our country. So how many rheumatologists are there? If you take our people who have been registered in the Indian Rheumatology Association, the numbers somewhere are dwindling between 1,000 to 2,000. So which means in a lifetime, a rheumatologist has to take care of around 1 lakh to 2 lakh of rheumatoid arthritis patients. So it's, it's literally not possible. So to create awareness about this rheumatoid arthritis patient, it needs a big effort from the uh, nation itself. See, uh, recently the ICMR had published, uh, it is uh, it is requesting uh, research in various fields. Unfortunately, rheumatoid arthritis doesn't penetrate into the concept at all. We have rheumatic heart disease, which is very, very rare nowadays. And they are uh, asking for research to improve the quality of life and all those things. Unfortunately, rheumatoid arthritis is, is really short of that. So this awareness creation is important from the patient point, they should be treated well. We have to create awareness among the general practitioner itself. Because as a rheumatologist, I think it is practically impossible for us to cater the needs of all the rheumatoid arthritis patients. So we need to educate our co-colleagues, MBBS, MBBS, MD people, all those people who are the, who are the go-to them for these patients. See, the rheumatoid arthritis patient takes around uh, minimum three to five years to reach a rheumatologist directly. 
the, the scene has not changed much. They go through all those alternative medications, they go through the ambiguous persons, they go through the orthopedicians, and when they reach, they reach in a chronic stage. What this newer medication has done to us is it has, it has changed the way we approach the rheumatoid arthritis as such. We treat them aggressively. We give them a, a, a remission, what we call as a disease-free state, and sometimes a drug-free state also. All these concepts are coming up. So we need more awareness about public, as uh, Paul was also saying that this is a chronic disease. Once it is doomed as rheumatoid arthritis, they are going to be there for a long period of time. And we don't have enough rheumatologists in our hand to treat all of them. So this needs to be a, a possibly a point of concern which has to be raised with the authorities. And I think more and more, see, Indian Rheumatology Association is fighting it. They are, they are, they are bringing up a lot of, lot of awareness issues. They are putting up a lot of programs. They are conducting rallies, all those things, but this is still not enough. Thank you, Dr. for highlighting that point that uh, we need to have uh, more of uh, awareness about the disease. And also, uh, as you said, uh, there are less uh, like rheumatoid uh, arthritis specialists also here in India. And we need to also raise concern regarding that as well. Uh, uh, Dr. Rahul, coming to you, uh, as uh, Dr. Prabhu explained about this, uh, that this is one of the important issues that there is a need for a more of creating awareness. Uh, but apart from that, are there any, any specific barriers or limitations within the healthcare system uh, like that is hindering the availability or the affo affordability of the and the good quality treatment for rheumatoid arthritis uh, treatment in India? And if so, what are they? Rightly said by Dr. Naga Prabhu, as the less number of rheumatologists are there, patient reaches to uh, rheumatologists at least after three to five years. So that is the biggest concern. And less number of rheumatologists in government setup also. Most of the rheumatologists are in private sector. Though the, the government medical colleges, they don't have the department of rheumatology. As government is increasing, medical colleges in the government sector, but they don't have a rheumatology department in there. So only medicine people, they treat the rheumatology cases. So they are not, they are no expert rheumatologists are there in government sector. Second is the costly medicines are not being covered by insurance companies. So their treatment, affording uh, this costly treatment is not being uh, uh, covered by insurance companies. They don't give, especially Chiranjeevi, any other private insurance companies, Government programs like Chiranjeevi in Rajasthan, like uh, Chiranjeevi or Ayushman Bharat in Central Campus thing. They don't cover rheumatoid arthritis treatment under their policy. So that is the biggest challenge for that. So these are the uh, things which are hindering the treatment of rheumatology. And at the level of patient, they don't think it's a treatable disease. And early two years are very important because there is a window of opportunity to treat those patients. And usually they miss that window of opportunity. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rahul, for uh, bringing up that point. Uh, with that same note, I want to go to uh, Dr. Nilesh. Uh, Dr. Nilesh, uh, like uh, as we all spoke about, uh, the in, like uh, we need to create awareness. We also do not have much uh, like uh, a specialist here in India to treat the diseases. Uh, so, uh, what do you think? Uh, what are the measures that can be taken to improve, uh, like the afford uh, affordability and also the quality of the treatment uh, when we talk about the rheumatoid arthritis? Many points have been discussed by my seniors, but uh, I think uh, from the grassroots level, uh, two or three things have to be imbibed. First of all, the MBBS curriculum has to introduce rheumatology as a subject where where the MBBS students are made aware of why uh, these uh, diseases are not uh, simple diseases. These are complex diseases which need handling. At least the awareness that uh, rheumatoid arthritis can actually destroy your joints and lead to deformities. And uh, uh, similarly, other rheumatic diseases needs to be dealt, uh, dealt with a specialist or with some kind of uh, more uh, aggressive approach. This, this point is lacking. Many doctors uh, especially who are not trained in rheumatology, still feel that it is just arthritis. It is not just arthritis. These are systemic diseases which can destroy multiple joints and multiple organs in the body. With regards to affordability, I think, yes, many medications are available, but uh, I still think that a large chunk of our uh, rheumatoid arthritis population is very poor. So for them, even uh, taking medications of 2,000, 3,000 or even 1,000 rupees per month 
along with consultant uh, charges uh, is is very difficult and uh, rahul sir very rightly pointed out that uh, government colleges don't have department for example uh, in the state of maharashtra you don't have a proper department of rheumatology even in a single medical college there are some opds which are running but you don't have a department of rheumatology in any of the uh, maharashtra government medical college and uh, uh, we we are saying uh, we are seeing uh, 10000 20000 patients in the government medical college which are sometimes not seen by rheumatologists and that's why there is lot of poor quality of care this this hospitals can provide you the affordable medications uh, at free cost but sometimes there is no rheumatologist to deliver that kind of health care so there are many challenges uh, it will include uh, uh initiation from government side awareness at doctors level awareness at patients level and uh, obviously uh, provision of uh, medicines uh, which will come from government once the government is aware of the situation at this point uh, we are trying our best to raise the awareness but uh, i think unless and until uh, there is a government initiative to push the agenda uh, it will be a very slow and arduous process uh, thank you, Dr. Nilesh, uh, like for highlighting that point that a lot of government institutes also do not have a like a like a specialist available and also a department as you mentioned. Uh, and when we talk about the, the treatment, that is little far then. Uh, Dr. Santosh, I want to come to you uh, and ask uh, like a in the same lines like as a healthcare professional, uh, like. Uh, like how can uh, we can include uh, rheumatologists uh, rheumatologist and also contribute to the awareness and uh, also uh, like as you as us being a specialist can you also like in your uh, hospital can you also uh, like uh, bring when you bring in patients do you also have such uh, options that you can also reduce their uh, treatment and also give them a good quality treatment uh, are they are these such kind of a treatment available and uh, can this be improved further yeah, I think that is uh, what I would like to say is regarding awareness first. Uh, we do have the opportunities and we uh, definitely have been trying. IRA has been pushing forward. I think every month we have a message or a mail from IRA regarding we have like Sriyodharma day. We had few days previously we had a Shogren's uh, awareness and we, prior to that we had the rheumatoid awareness and angst bond awareness. Practically every month, uh, I think all of the rheumatologists uh, in our country try to increase the awareness, one, among the patients, two, among all the, I would say, uh, students, uh, those who are doing their MBBS or those who are doing their MD uh, or DNB in private uh, setup like my setup uh, and uh, like in government setup also. And so we have been trying to increase the awareness. We have been trying to include the media into all the everything, even the papers, newspapers and all the, uh, I think the online media also. So that is, we have been trying to do our effort from our side, but I think still we are limited to like uh, cities only. That is what I would like to say. We are just limited to bigger towns and cities. There are still, I think, more than uh, 75 to 80 percent of the population. We are still not reaching to them. I think we need uh, more outreach programs, more outreach, uh, uh, I would say, awareness programs where I think we can go ahead and do that. Uh, many a times, logistically, it's not possible uh, by me being in a private setup and uh, uh, many a times we're not able to devote that time because of the such a kind of a caseload uh, in our practice nowadays. So uh, I think one, we should definitely need to increase the number of rheumatology, rheumatologists, specialists, I think one. Second is that definitely government, uh, medical colleges and government should take an initiative uh, to, uh, to make departments uh, available even in all, even if all the medical colleges, I think it have a, it, it starts a rheumatology department. I think they'll have a far better outreach than uh, from uh, someone who is in a private setup. Because you have practically now medical colleges which are there in every district now. So if every district has a rheumatology department and if they start an awareness program there, so that will definitely increase the awareness uh, among the general population, among all the students who are doing their MBBS, MD or DNB. So that is, uh, that is, that is definitely uh, one thing. And regarding the affordability of the treatment, uh, being in a private setup, 
uh, giving concessions. We can give concessions from our side regarding our consultation charges and all that. Definitely, I have an independence. I being in, uh, I I am associated with Narayana Health. So they have uh, there's some uh, NGOs attached along with them who help patient to like uh, monetarily uh, to uh, procure medicines. Sometimes they help with procurement of biologics also. So that is the way which I can help the patient from my side. Uh, but I still think that it is very inadequate because we still have limited numbers of patients whom we can help by doing this. So definitely, if we start having these biological medications or costly medications. As all my seniors have highlighted uh, through either Ayushman Bharat or through the uh, state uh, programs, so I think that would really help the patient. And one more thing, even the private, in, even if those people who can afford, for them taking biologics for like five months, six months, or a year, still they will be able to take it. But then again, to extend beyond that, these it starts pinching your uh, pocket. Even if you are a middle class or kind of a higher middle class. So even the insurance companies, I think the private insurance companies, the private insurers, I think they should be told to include all the diseases uh, within their ambit and to include the biological treatment also, the advanced treatment also that should be provided, including the on OPD basis, like the subcut medicines which we'll be using, biologicals which we'll be using, that should also be covered by the insurers. So I think. I think everything has to be done. Everybody has to be included uh, in both the things, government, the private setup, private insurers and everything in creating both the awareness and reducing the affordability of the medications. Thank you, Dr. Santosh, for uh, talking about that. Uh, like different, different points have you mentioned that, that, uh, that we need to also uh, work on our insurance policies. We also need to uh, work within our organizations to uh, bring up uh, like options for treating the uh, patients as well. Uh, that can be another solution. Uh, Dr. Anupam, uh, coming to you, my next question. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Like, uh, is there like, are there any alternative or generic medications available uh, that can also help reduce the cost of uh, rheumatoid arthritis patients in India? So, I think uh, uh, the uh, medicine uh, facilities run under the central government. I think the uh, under the guidance of the Honorable Prime Minister. I think they have facility for uh, disease-modifying drugs now. A lot of patients have told me that. So I think that is one important thing. I'm not really aware whether you can get generic non-company medications in the market. I think by far and large, all of them belong to uh, one company or the other. I think most of the companies for majority of the medications have done a pretty good job in bringing down the prices. The prices have actually come down. And I think that also has got a lot to do with the government policies of putting a number of drugs under rate control. So uh, they are much cheaper than when I started studying and started my own practice. Um, can there be generic medications? Look. Um, um, the, the fight between branded and generic medications is an ongoing one and there's a lot of talk about it. Um, I just think branded medications are something that are brought into the market by one specific company. And I see no reason why there cannot be a public-private partnership between the companies and the government in bringing any branded medication to the public at an affordable cost. Um, there's another thing that we doctors have often pointed out, I think all the panelists would agree with me, is the gross difference for the costlier medicines in terms of what their uh, maximum retail price is and what they're finally made available to the public. So um, I think that brings a bad name not only to the doctors, but also to the pharmaceutical industry. And that's something that I think a lot of us doctors have repeatedly implored um, various companies to not have that difference. I mean, have a have a rate at which you can give to any patient without you know having to say we've got the medicine for twenty thousand bucks, but we can give it to you for six thousand. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me at all. And I think before the public sets in or before um, 
the um, they come in with their rules and regulations, I think it's time to regulate uh, ourselves there. So uh, no, I don't think generics are there. I think a lot of affordable medications are there. I think their prices could possibly uh, become more affordable. And uh, yes, there are certain uh, government uh, run medical shops which do provide uh, these medications, at least the basic ones, at a very, very subsidized rate. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anupam, for uh, bringing up that point. And uh, as I asked, like about the uh, alternative or generic medications, uh, if anybody in the panel would also like to answer this, uh, like, can this be a solution uh, for uh, treating the rheumatoid arthritis uh, in India? Uh, if any of the panel member would like to answer this. So, see, basically, as Sir was saying, generic medicines, no? Um, uh, they are produced as good as the branded medicines. Only thing is, it has been uh, uh, branded as in our in Tamil Nadu, we, can, we say it as Modi's medicine. Uh, but it has reached the public well. And uh, see, there are, there are the difficulties which we face when we sit up in a multinational uh, group, uh, uh, having a corporate uh, hospital and uh, uh, a clinic center or uh, a small uh, OP setup. Uh, so we have the liberty to reduce the cost of the drugs. As Sir was pointing, there is a gross difference between the purchase price of the biologicals, which are available, and the MRP. Now, uh, when we say some, some whatever we say, these people get into the Google, search for the online uh, pharmacy store, and get the price. So there is no point we give a gross difference if it is somewhere around uh, 15,000 rupees in the uh, MRP, and you're giving it 4,000 rupees in the online, uh, that creates a lot of confusion. And um, so this is something which we have pointed out and a lot of other companies have then pulled down their cost. They are coming up with an MRP at a lower rate itself. So that is something which is being taken care of. And yes, the generic medicines are there. It is being supplied to majority of the hospitals. Only thing is, um, we have to see to that, uh, the, the, the what is the this expiry date and all those things. Around. They are shorter for the generic drugs. And there are some uh, preparation oriented issues are there. And you have to take meticulous care when you're using this generic medications, unlike the, unlike the branded ones, which are which way somebody else takes up the uh, headache. Uh, see, we, we prescribe, I do prescribe generic medications. I, it, it is now uh, a, a rule that uh, the prescription should carry only generic names. There, are, there should not be any branded names. Uh, and it is being enforced in all of the uh, medical colleges as such. It is coming up in a big manner. So uh, we give the opportunity to the patient to take care. Um, see, uh, um, uh, what I say is like uh, this costly medications are needed only for a particular group of patients. There are a good number of genuinely active disease patients who require this costly drugs and there are a lot of support groups, even from the pharma company itself, they are the support groups. They, they just are liberal enough to give them free samples, which are available or at a reduced cost directly to them. So in that way, we are striking some bad balance. But as I said, it's like, as everyone was pointing out, it's like we are just treating the uh, cream of the population. That is just five to 10% are being treated with this and the majority of them who require a simple uh, disease modifying rheumatic drugs are not able to reach that. So that is where I think the rheumatology has to go into the grassroots level to the primary health, to the primary health centers level and see to that it is reachable there also. There I think will make a difference to majority of the people. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis affects people uh, at somewhere around their middle ages. So that disrupts the entire family itself, which we may not actually directly uh, know the same. It is the female people who are female who are affected. They are the one who maintain the houses. So uh, sometimes they are just left like that. They are not being uh, taken care of. So I think it has to go into the grassroots level. And generic medicines and medicines which are available at the government level are the answer to treat rheumatoid arthritis in a better way. If you points that I'd like to make, and there have been things that we've been going on with patients for a very long uh, time. One is that I think every family member, and I'm speaking this for India specifically, needs to do a little bit of budgeting for their health as well. 
I guess you have budgeting for marriages and birthdays and festivals and holies and Diwalis and Onams and Ganesh Chaturthi. But very few families that I have come across actually budget for their health. So till the time that we become a socialist state and everything is taken care of partially by what we pay and partially by what the government supports, I think every family needs to budget some portion of their earnings. And I know it's not easy, but I think it's essential. That's number one. Number two, even though the pharmaceutical industry and doctors go hand in hand, but we doctors have a very, very wayside um, interaction with the actual goings on of the pharmaceutical industry and the manufacturing processes. So I think it's extremely important for the pharmaceutical industry to look inwards and see at what point, how and when can we decide to solve these problems with regards costings and quality. I think both the things are important. The doctors are actually at the receiving end. Um, I don't disagree with the prescription of generic medications, but I do have a huge issue with the actual quality of medications that are available out there. And if the doctor's prescription and his treatment are responsible for the outcome of the disease in his patient, then the doctor is answerable. At that point in time, we don't have a separate lab set up to say whether methotrexate 7.5 milligram actually has methotrexate 7.5 milligram. And people and, and the government and the legislation do not come down heavily enough, I feel, on people who are manufacturing fake or substandard medications and um, you know, actually playing with the lives of people. So I'll definitely say that budget, number one. Number two, the pharmaceutical industry definitely needs to look inwards. I mean, we docs are not actually the right people to say how to those things need to be done. And number three, the quality of medications with the price needs to be ensured. You can't have methotrexate for 10 pesa in a government-run shop ensuring quality and still have uh, methotrexate in the market selling at 20 bucks a tablet. I mean, we doctors have no way of knowing whether the two are equivalent, whether their salts are equivalent, and whether they're going to have an equivalent effect. But unfortunately, we are asked, is it okay? Uh, you tell me, how do we give an answer to that question? And I'm more than happy if somebody chips in for that as well. There has to be a minimum purchasing price also, as well as maximum purchasing price. The two things should be uh, like uh, very clear. And there should be no be like no MRP is higher than our actual price. And actual price should be at minimum this thing. It is affordable. And that is not compromising the quality of the drug. That should be the message. I would like to just chip in. Uh, uh, so uh, when we talk about generic, uh, I, I am a big, uh, I used to be a big fan of generic till probably some time ago. But recently there have been a study from PGI that uh, if you, they actually gave a very simple antifungal drug to two set of patients. They brought one from generic store and they used some branded brand. And the difference of achieving drug levels was starkly different. Uh, so the branded medicine patients could achieve the drug levels in almost 90, 95% of patients. And in the generic arm, uh, they could only find around uh, Twenty-eight percent of the patients achieving the required drug level. So this is huge. Uh, this is huge. This is coming from a government center, which has done its one of the kind study, comparing uh, the market generics versus the branded drug for a very common indication. Now this antifungal drug is very very common drug, uh, known as itraconazole. So this has really shaken the belief that how do we tell that what you are taking is the right drug? There have been uh, previous anecdotal reports that uh, generics don't work, but I have had family members where they have taken generics. The biggest problem is uh, even there may be some branded formulations which are not working well or they may have quality issues, but overall uh, you, can, you can sometimes trust the branded formulation. So 
as vaklu sir pointed out uh, now we have some basis also to say that probably the genetics are of very poor quality at times and there is no way to say which generic is better uh, or which generic is worse now there are lot of rules and regulations in place but unfortunately uh, it is it is not always followed upon when the margins are very less uh, branded companies have their reputations to call upon unfortunately whenever you are going to buy a generic medications many a times you will keep on getting different brands all together and you don't even know which companies are manufacturing them so there is there is no quality control there is no branding recall uh, there is no initiative on those companies and to ensure quality and somehow they are they are able to pass through the loopholes available in the system and this creates a lot of issues uh, for our patients so i think again and again uh, the same point uh, that government has to take a big big initiative and we hopefully will be able to push the government to get into this uh, sector and probably do something for our patients and that is op- that appears to be only way forward for making this affordable in the long run i i guess nilesh not only the government but as i was saying we need to start looking in words as well i mean why should yes, there be somebody censuring us all the time why should for example a miropenem that you can get for 400 bucks for a reliable company be priced at 1800 bucks an injection or why should a zolidronic acid by the same company as a generic be affordable for 300 bucks but when you are setting it out into the market be available for 1100 or 1200 bucks so these are discrepancies that needs to be looked at by every company if we are to bring this life saving science back into science rather than a business i guess so but that will be happening only if we develop a socialistic healthcare system correct and correct. and that again will again come from government only so that's why i keep on harping because if you have a capitalist economy uh, there will be always price differences and we have to decide whether the healthcare should be part capitalistic part socialistic or completely socialistic which has its own pros and cons but at least at least our government setups if they they can cater to a large number of people and the rheumatology department can open up in those colleges that will be helpful uh, which which is still a far far absolutely. world absolutely absolutely thank you dr anpam and thank you dr rahul and also dr nilesh for taking this up and talking about uh, like a very important topic and dr prabhu as well uh, as he highlighted like the best use of generic drug or uh, un, uh, like a branded drug uh, like i hope uh, we would uh, it's, it's not a solution yet and it's not a conclusion to any of these answers uh, and uh, i hope uh, as you guy uh, as you all uh, doctors practice you might be coming across different different kinds of uh, drugs and uh, you would be doing the best for your patients uh dr paul uh, coming to you uh, my next question uh, like uh, as we talk about like uh, the solutions to it so uh, what are the some of the potential strategies and solutions that could be implemented to make the treatment options more affordable for rheumatoid arthritis in india uh, as a policy intervention uh, what can the things be done here in india the first and foremost thing is that early treatment you'll have to use less medicines so that will be early diagnosis and treatment will reduce the burden to some extent uh, second is uh, not allowing the disease to advance far much so if you do that then again the usage of medicines will actually uh, come down then the insurance companies so in situations where you have you have to use biologicals most of them are given on a day care procedures so on day care procedures most of them are not usually available so in that scenario that becomes a big burden for, and it becomes an out of pocket expense for most of our patients so that becomes the next challenge and again uh, you, as you see if you delay treatment if you don't take treatment they're going to develop more and more problems so you're going to add more and more medicines for different problems which they would not have had to take if it was the initial situation so early treatment then probably access to people who know something about rheumatoid arthritis would be my uh, message to 
somehow reduce the treatment costs and burden to the patient uh dr nilesh coming to you uh, like uh, earlier also a lot of uh, like uh, doc, i think dr santosh mentioned about the insurance uh, so when we talk about the insurance uh, here in india uh, like how does the lack of health insurance coverage uh, contribute to the problem like a uh, lot of people can not afford the treatment option because of this reason that uh, the insurance uh, doesn't provide covers it or maybe even the as a government also like uh, the aishman bharat also i don't think so the aishman bharat the uh, scheme covers this and even the state government uh, schemes also do not cover uh, rheumatoid arthritis do you think uh, there should be an a uh, very good intervention here uh, when uh, to include uh, the uh, rheumatoid arthritis again uh, there are two models to follow here we either follow the us based insurance model or we follow the europe based uh, socialistic healthcare model when you try to follow an insurance based model and try to think that every uh, chronic diseases can be covered by insurance and should be covered by insurance it is it it seems very good but uh, the biggest problem is what premiums are you going to pay so we are always unhappy that rheumatic diseases are not involved uh, in uh, many of the insurance plans and even if pre existing rheumatic diseases the biologics will not be covered uh, but uh, it is a big problem because uh, first of all the government uh, is is not pushing that agenda that all rheumatic diseases should be covered by the insurance companies uh, that has to be sorted by the iirdi but if this happens let's say they will cover some injections or some expensive treatments the cost of premium for an average person is going to go very high because uh, uh, every time the government comes with a law that Uh, let's say uh, they have come up with the, with the factor that you should cover mental severe mental health uh, illnesses into the purview of insurance the insurance company will uh, always increase the premium the moment they are going to include a chronic health illness which was previously not covered because suddenly a large number of population who was not able to claim will start making the claims so is it is it a viable solution in the long run i really don't know i still feel for a country like india uh, we have to make our uh, socialistic system much more robust at the same time push the insurance companies uh, to include uh, our diseases and push the pharma companies to uh, think inwards as vaklu sir said and uh, uh, and uh, probably decrease the prices so that our premiums don't increase so all in all uh, again uh, uh, an insurance based healthcare system which uh, the us is based upon uh, will will be very difficult to sustain in the long run because many a times in such system the prices are inflated three times because suppose you are asking for 100 rupees and somebody is giving 20 rupees so you start making sound like you need 500 rupees so that you get uh, 100 rupees actually so inflation will happen but if the government controls the healthcare system and tries to provide something at affordable rate it will be affordable for a large masses of people uh, insurance definitely will help uh, but if we try to cover every chronic diseases into insurance health system our premiums will double already our premiums have increased by 50% 100% in last 5 years and this is only going to get worse and sometimes after a while maybe the insurance premiums will also become unaffordable so as of now i think only 15% of india or 20% of indian uh, population is insured and uh, with the premiums we have right now it will be impossible to achieve a, a higher degree of uh, insurance compliance to a large number of population so again the government system has to get more robust to make it more affordable a uh, quick question from you and all the other panelists i was just wondering do health insurance premiums cover good government medical colleges or is it only private medical colleges no no sir they they cover uh, government medical colleges but this will not be a cashless facility because uh, you have to get registered as a cashless facility if you okay. if you provide your bills of government medical colleges pharmacy bills they will be covered sir they will be covered in any setup you have to do two things to claim insurance you need to notify that i have got admitted even if it's one day later Uh, but within a stipulated period of time you can't you can't get admitted and after 10 days inform the insurance company every insurance company has its norm and second thing is you should provide the requisite bills in government hospital for example uh, 
in in mumbai bmc hospitals you don't have to pay much actually because your bed is free uh, your medicines are free what you will end up with some bills is some medications which are not available or you may end up with for example you have to get a blood product so they may take a processing fee which is again a nominal fee so you, you may end up for example if you are staying for 20 days uh, that bill may come up to 10 15 000 rupees and if you have insurance you will any days anyways going to uh, you can claim it so that's not a problem the they are covered but you will not get a cashless facility because for cashless they they need to have a registration of some kind with the insurance company and again whether a cashless facility is really needed in a government setup uh, with, with such low cost is is again a question yeah it would be, i mean listening to you it might be very interesting data to find out of all those people who have health insurance from the private sector how many actually avail it at a government setup level it will be very difficult unless and until it's a premier institute where something uh, of high quality is done because suppose if i have a big so let's say even if i have a 1 lakh ka insurance there are many nursing homes in bombay who will who will do a routine treatment of let's say dengue malaria at 30 40000 rupees and uh, the quality of government hospital uh, is is very very uh very, very let us let us just not say anything let us just say that sometimes the going gets tough yeah it's very difficult basically yeah, i i did not tough. say anything so yeah. it will be difficult for a person who can afford any kind of uh, private treatment to go to a government setup especially if he does not have to pay out of pocket so cashless schemes give them that leverage uh, uh, maybe any other panel um, may, may would like to answer this question uh, that are there any other countries who have achieved a good uh, treatment provided a good quality treatment or an affordable treatment to their uh, uh, countrymen and that is like uh, a, can be a good example for us uh, india stands up uh, taking uh, medications from hiv hiv medications which are pretty costly uh, outside and uh, we have provided them at a, uh, affordable rates years before and uh, uh, you cannot imagine any of the biologicals which are available at the cost like what we have now to get it in any other country also see the only point is we don't have a structured system we don't have an uh, uh, so healthcare system which is like uh, a unified as everyone was talking up the government has to have an infrastructure and government has to see to that uh, every rheumatoid arthritis patient is taken care of that is the only point we are lagging but as of uh, the thing i think nowhere else in the world you might find uh, such a, uh, uh, a quality medications which are available at an affordable price and we have an excellent team of people who are there who are heading up the uh, departments who are heading up the uh, our association and all those things so i think we stand apart uh, i mean the point we lack is we don't produce data which is also being uh, being now cornered up we are getting the enough scientific data from nook and corners of our place so i don't think nobody else can replace us uh, and i hope uh, india would also set an example very soon and we are already setting an example uh, in terms of different kinds of diseases here in india and very soon it would be the rheumatoid arthritis also coming back to that thing uh, we do have ayushman bharat schemes having specific rheumatology codes and you can use those codes to help these patients out for very severe manifestations so uh, to <coughs> not criticize the government too much there are some initiatives i think the policy makers will have to push the government to include more uh, indications of rheumatology into that but there are certain uh, already certain uh, codes available for rheumatoid arthritis and lupus patients uh, in rheumatology so government definitely has the eye on it Uh, let's hope uh, that situation gets uh, gets much better with time uh, dr paul uh, coming to you like uh, as we have discussed about uh, like affordable treatment and the quality treatment uh, so what do you think a, a role of a pharmaceutical companies can be uh, in uh, to play like in, for ensuring an accessible and uh, affordable quality uh, affordable and a good quality treatment for uh, all the rheumatoid arthritis patients i think a few points have already been discussed regarding the mrp the issue the discrepancy with the mrp and the actual landing cost for the medicine so that could be one area which the pharmaceutical company can really address why they have to have that kind of a system where the drug is available for costs and the mrp is 10 times the 
cost. So that is one thing I think uh, the pharmaceutical company really has to have a look on to that. Otherwise, the pharmaceutical industry in India is actually very good. And I think uh, we are getting very good medicines at relatively less cost. I don't think anywhere in the world they would have a, uh, medicines at these kind of costs. But certain medicines, the MRP landing cost issue is, remains a huge, huge concern. And there are support programs from various uh, pharmaceutical companies. Even the multinational companies do have certain support programs uh, where they give uh, medicines uh, and there is a supportive second medicine is given free of cost at a reduced cost. So something like that for the innovative medicines to uh, actually uh, make it more affordable for our common man. Uh, coming to almost the end of the panel, I would like to uh, take a one question for all the panelists here. Uh, so uh, based on your expertise and experience, uh, what are the top three actionable recommendations would you suggest to address the issue of affordable and quality treatment for rheumatoid arthritis? Uh, as we close this panel, uh, Dr. Santosh, I would like to start with you. Yeah, definitely. First, I would say is to expand the ambit of rheumatology to all the districts to all the all the government hospital i think that should be one because that will lead to increase in the number of uh, qualified persons who can treat rheumatology so that is one thing that would definitely be number one. Second is uh, when we were talking about uh, including including the rheumatic diseases in uh, different types of insurance different types of state schemes and central schemes uh, definitely that should be done and uh, Third, I would say uh, regarding we had a discussion about the difference between the MRP, the printed MRP, and the uh, available uh, the price at which the ultimately the drug is available either to the hospital or to the patient. Uh, so I think even that difference should be controlled, and it's a uh, margin has to be put that this it should not be more than that. So I think I would say these three things would definitely help in one increasing the awareness, second in uh, making the treatment more affordable for everybody. Dr. Anupam, uh, your take on this. So, Riddhi, I believe charity becomes uh, begins at home. And so I strongly feel that we need to start budgeting. You have to, it's good to be dependent on the government and the pharmaceutical and everybody, but please budget a little bit of your day-to-day -day spending for your personal needs. That's number one. Number two, I very strongly feel that this is the time to start looking inwards for the pharmaceutical industry. I think it's organized, but it's chaotically organized the way our traffic is in India. Everybody seems to find their way, but uh, at the risk of practically killing each other on the street. And uh, number three, I think it's important for the government to look into a number of things. Uh, keeping all the opinions from all the stakeholders in mind. It doesn't have to be something that you don't have to go for the jugular or the carotid artery to set things right. I think you can take opinion from everybody. I think the Honorable Prime Minister has talked of Ayushman Bharat. Ayushman Bharat is not only about longevity of life. It is also about um, a potentially healthy life. And you don't want to become a cripple with joint disease or autoimmune diseases. So they definitely need to start including some of our diseases uh, into their treatment programs and move forwards on that. Dr. Rahul, uh, your take on this. At the patient part, uh, there is nothing free in this world. So patient has to like, uh, like think about their health and they should uh, like take insurance or something else. They should not be dependent on the government. Second thing, the referral or patient reaches to rheumatologist as early as possible. Because early, best treatment which is effective uh, in the terms of quality and affordable. These are the things and treatment is to be regular treatment. So these four things are very important. Early, uh, best treatment, quality treatment. Third thing is uh, uh, like effective quality in terms of quality and affordable that is more important thing so mrp should be there is should not be a big gap between mrp and purchasing price so that has to be reduced by pharmaceutical that is my take uh, dr paul uh, your take my suggestion would be like like we were talking a lot about the generics so if, if we have generics which are actually quite good quite effective 
and safe. I am pretty sure that most of the doctors would have no hesitancy with uh, prescribing these low-cost generics. But the issue comes because many people are able to bring out generics in India which have no quality and there is no, there's no, uh, nobody to regulate the quality of these drugs. Say you go to a generic uh, shop, you get a the uh, medicine from a company X today, next month it will be Y and the third month will be Z. And some of X, Y, and Z, some of them will be good, but some of them may not be good. So, but if you can ensure that X, Y, and Z are good, I'm pretty sure that most of the patients in India will be able to have affordable drugs. That would be number one. Second thing is we discussed regarding the awareness among the patients and the adherence to therapy would be the number two and three things which I would like to highlight. Uh, Dr. Nilesh, uh, your takeaway points. I think uh, uh, early awareness uh, will be one thing, pushing the government to set up initiatives, pushing the government schemes to set up the initiatives and uh, doctors and pharmaceutical companies coming together uh, to take uh, this initiative to make it more affordable for the patients will be, will be three things which will encompass everything to give a quality care. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Prabhu, your uh, takeaway points uh, from this panel discussion. Yeah, see, basically we had uh, such a fruitful uh, discussion over this. And uh, I think the debate is not about generic or uh, branded. So that I think we'll keep it aside. Uh, the, the thing is, we need to have an affordable medication. Uh, the, the concept of personalized medicine has come up now. See, uh, all, all medications are not needed for everybody. So we need to assess each patient and decide what is best for them. What is best for one patient may not be the best for the other one. So as a, as a person, I sit down, when I see a 20-year-old, I, I talk in a different way. When I see a 40-year-old, I talk in a different way. 60-year-old, it is a different. 80-year-old is a different. Everyone is the same, but the, the need for them and what we need to achieve with them, how long are they going to continue the drugs or some things which we need to take care when we start advising them. The problem is uh, they come, see a rheumatologist, and then go away. They go for all other forms of treatment and then come back again. So that is where I think uh, as a rheumatologist, I take another like that. I need to talk to each of them, ensure that they reach the place, they reach the correct destination, they complete their family, they have a good quality life. So personalized medicine is the need. And two is something like um, as an Indian uh, thing, like we are still following some other people's guidelines. We are following this NHS guidelines, we are following the CSER, ULAR guidelines. I think it is time. We, see, people are working on it, but I'm just putting it across that we should have our own guidelines. Somebody should not market and say that this is the best drug for you and you have to use it. That is not the point. So we should have our own guidelines and the guidelines which is fitting the north may not fit the south. So the guidelines has to be personalized again. So personalized medicine is the need. And uh, this uh, chatbot, yeah, I think, I think is going to create a big confusion in the future. Whatever we are going to say, it is going to be negated by them. So all these things, I think we have to see the technical aspect also and the functional aspect of the patient also. So uh, the uh, artificial intelligence, again, it gets comes by the data we feed. So we should have our own Indian data. So that is time. We, we stop using ACR, ULAR guidelines. Sorry to say that. And we should have our own guidelines. Thank you, Dr. Prabhu, uh, for closing that uh, very good uh, panel session on uh, rheumatoid arthritis and also pro uh, like how we can provide uh, affordable and a good treatment for all the patients here. Uh, we have touched upon uh, various different topics on a good cost, uh, like there should be a cost-effective treatment, there should be awareness about the disease. Uh, very important, there should be early intervention that the patient should reach their right uh, expert for the treatment. And also, uh, like the budgeting, as uh, Dr. Anupam has highlighted twice thrice that the patient also should start doing a budgeting for their families and their for themselves uh, for any sort of medical treatments and yes uh, the pharmaceutical industries uh, are working to uh, their best for providing the best medication and i we hope uh, you all doctors also would work uh, the best out of uh, the, your efforts and do uh, like good for the uh, like the uh, the patients around uh, thank you everyone for joining and we hope this panel discussion will serve as a catalyst uh, 
uh, for change for the change inspiring action, uh, actionable steps and her collaborative efforts to improve the lives of individuals affected by rheumatoid arthritis and uh, i'd like to extend my thanks to sipla for this initiative and iw council uh, for uh, like uh, talking about uh, such a good initiative thank you all have a good evening Thank you.